You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday, 4th of July, and I'm Brenda from Milford. Last Thursday marked the halfway point for 2022, and it's worth reflecting on where we're at. For the first six months of the year, the S&P 500 was down 21%, the NASDAQ 100 was down 29%, and closer to home, the ASX 200 fed slightly better given commodities tailwinds, down 12%. Conflict in Ukraine and the ensuing global ramifications seen in surging inflation has put a lot of pressure on markets, and the data suggests there could be more to come. Global data this week did little to abate mounting growth concerns. U.S. personal income and spending data showed that real consumption fell by 0.4% versus an expectation of minus 0.3% in May, with downward revisions to previous month's readings. Inflation-adjusted spending on services was more resilient than goods, advancing 0.3%, but not enough to offset weakness in spending on durables. This slowdown in spending adds to concerns about the economic outlook, given this is the main driver of the U.S. economy. The ISM Manufacturing Index was released last week, falling to a two-year low of 53 from 56.1, still in expansionary territory, but certainly adding to fears over the health of the economy. Looking into the detail, new orders fell to 49.2 from 55.1, a sign that we could see a sharper slowdown in coming months. We also got a read on the US consumer via the Conference Board Consumer Confidence Index. The headline level fell 4.5 points in June to a 16-month low of 98.7, below expectations of 100. Within the reading, assessments of the present situation were broadly similar to the prior reading. However, expectations slumped to the lowest level in almost 10 years. In Australia, data is so far holding up better. Retail sales data for May rose 0.9% versus an expectation of 0.4%, reaching a fresh record of $34.2 billion. The rise was broad-based, with five of the six categories gaining, led by department stores and followed by spending on cafes, restaurants and takeaways. The strong numbers suggest the RBA will continue on their path of more rapid monetary policy tightening, and we'll get more clarity on this at this week's meeting. In equity news, Carr announced that it would exercise its option over the remaining 51% in US-based Trader Interactive for approximately $1.2 billion, with funding coming via a $1.2 billion equity raise. The acquisition multiple paid was 23.4 times enterprise value to EBITDA, down from the 26.5 paid in May for the initial stake. The strategic rationale for the transaction was that Trader Interactive has a market-leading position in the U.S. non-autos industry, they have a strong business model, and large future growth opportunities. Collins Food reported FY22 results last week, with underlying NPAT of $30.8 million, 4.9% above market expectations. The beat was driven by a 2.6% beat at the top line, and a 4% beat of underlying EBITDA. KFC Europe was the standout with same-store sales growth of 16.8% and an EBITDA margin of 14.5%, while KFC Australia saw same-store sales growth of 1.4% and an EBITDA margin of 21.6%. Looking ahead to this week, the key event on the calendar is the RBA meeting on Tuesday, where many are expecting the RBA to hike another 50 basis points, which would take the cash rate to 1.35%. Market participants are pricing an 80% chance of a 50 basis point hike. Elsewhere, we'll be watching U.S. durable goods orders for further signs on the health of the U.S. economy, as well as FOMC minutes and U.S. non-farm payrolls later in the week. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again next week.